So basically we have two handguns here. We have an HMK VP9, which shoots nine mils semi-auto, very standard in our industry. And then we have a Smith 44 revolver, much bigger. It's what this backpack says it's ready to take, so we'll find out if it takes it. I think it's really sad that a normal backpack, or what looks to be a normal backpack, is actually military grade protective equipment. You know, that's, it's really sad. In response to the mass shootings happening both inside and outside of school campuses across America, we're here in Lowell, Massachusetts to meet Joe Kieran. He's a CEO and founder of a company called Bullet Blocker, and they manufacture bulletproof backpacks. And we're here to find out if this is perpetuating the hysteria around mass shootings, or if this is just the reality of life in 2018. Joe Carr. Nice to meet you, nice Joe. Nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having me today. Yeah, welcome. Uh, well, this is uh, our dealer showroom. I could have a three-piece suit and still have a bulletproof vest on. Right. It's not like super heavy or even like bulky feeling. This is a, we call this a bug out vest. It's just bulletproof notebook. A lot of the parents were saying that uh, their kids can't bring backpacks into the school. So that's why we came up with some different alternatives. So what exactly are these backpacks capable of stopping? Pretty much all handguns, 44 Magnum, 357, 12 gauge shotgun. Oh, geez. This is for rifles. Uh, we don't manufacture it. Oh, Just this is like a ceramic rate. plate, yeah. Exactly, right. Uh, a lot of uh, parents were concerned about the rifles. So they were saying, oh, can you put a plate in their backpack? And I said, well, you, you can't. Right. You know, they'd, they'd take it out because it's just so heavy. Right. So this is the raw material? That's it, yeah. So that's... And it's the, this is it? This is all it. it is? That's all it is, yeah. What, five? 11 layers. Yeah, 11. 11, 11 layers? layers, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's all it takes. That's it. That stops the bullets. Joe may have been the first to produce bulletproof backpacks, but the trend has since gone mainstream. And while a student is more likely to face a life-threatening injury from playing sports than die in a school shooting, several other companies have popped up over the years selling all-in-one bulletproof backpacks. Interest in bulletproof backpacks spikes after every mass shooting that takes place at a school, and the products are now more widely available on the internet, and you can even get them at major retailers like Office Depot. Does the sale of bulletproof backpacks kind of contribute to the hysteria around school shootings? Uh, no, because it's, it's like any other tool. When fire extinguishers were invented or smoke detectors were invented, back before they were around, if a school burnt down, you know, it, it's horrific. The idea of having a bulletproof backpack or a bulletproof insert, whatever it is, it's just another tool that you would combat, you know, a potential, you know, horrific incident. The thing I'm kind of thinking is like, it's, it seems a little far-fetched to compare a school shooting to, you know, faulty wiring. It, it is, but, but the end results are the same. The uh, fire extinguisher could care less about the faulty wiring, mm. but they're there just in case. So we've seen where the backpacks are made, and now we're gonna go meet some of the kids that they were made to protect in the first place. So what's it like being in high school and knowing that some of your classmates might have bulletproof backpacks? The fact that some people feel compelled to have a bulletproof backpack is not surprising anymore. You know, maybe somebody would have considered that uh, before people really started talking about gun violence, but it's not surprising. All right, so I actually have someone I wanna show them to you guys. If your parents came home with one of these, right? What is your reaction? I'm an only child. I'm literally all my mom has. I think I'd be really, really sad because that means that she's extremely worried about my safety. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it shows that they've uh, given up in some respects, that they've just accepted that it's a possible... It's a new normal. Yeah, exactly. It's the new normal that at any moment your school could be the one that's in the headlines. Do you think that the fact that they look so normal runs the risk of like normalizing the violence that surrounds guns and schools and students. There's a sunflower on my bag. Like, this is a bulletproof 
backpack. It makes people think it's, oh, it's cute, I'm gonna add that to my bag. Like, no, this is not a normal thing that you should have. You shouldn't feel this way while you're at school. Would this give you the peace of mind of think, feeling like I'm safe? I mean, I think they should be available to us. I don't think that they would give me complete peace of mind. I wanted to see for myself how these backpacks actually work. So we're at On Target Firearms and Range, where owner Joe Rufiange agreed to help us test out the backpacks with three different guns. Each one fires a bullet with varying degrees of velocity and force. We're using a 9mm and a 44 caliber round. And even though the backpack is not rated to withstand it, we'll also test an AR-15, which shoots a smaller caliber bullet, but at a significantly higher velocity that delivers a much more devastating amount of force. We're doing this because the AR-15 and its variants have gained wide media attention after deadly incidents like the Sandy Hook and Parkland Mass School shootings. The backpacks come with a Kevlar insert that is stronger than steel, but five to six times lighter and designed to absorb the force of a bullet. The plastic fibers that make up the layers of the insert are so tightly woven that in order for the material to be penetrated, the bullet must be traveling at such high speeds it can literally push the fibers apart. The backpack was able to stop the bullets from the 9mm and the 44 caliber as marketed. We might be able to pull this one out actually. The 44 stopped Holy it. Holy shit. But the Kevlar provided almost no stopping power when the high velocity AR-15 round went right through it. So I'm holding one of the nine millimeter rounds that we fired into the backpack right now. And uh, I have like really mixed feelings about this because I understand we want to see if these things work and we had to try it out. But there is something profoundly fucked up about shooting a backpack. This could happen to a child while they have it on, like while they're at school. There's just something deeply disturbing about the fact that we just shot a backpack. Like we shot a backpack. Even though the vast majority of school shootings involve weapons that these backpacks are rated to stop, it's really unlikely that a student will die in a school shooting in the first place. Today, school shootings are less frequent than they were in the early 90s when student deaths were four times higher. But you wouldn't know it when bulletproof backpacks are trending as a back-to-school item. Risk perception consultant David Ropeek calculated that a student had roughly a 1 in 614 million chance of dying in a school shooting on any given day since the Columbine massacre in 1999. With such a low risk of dying in a school shooting, we asked him how a parent's fear may play into buying one of these products. Well, the fear is motivating parents to want to have some control. We're much more afraid of risks when we don't have any control. We look for ways that give us a feeling of control. So putting a bulletproof backpack on your kid, which is not going to protect him, and almost everybody knows that, feels like you're doing something. That's empowerment, and that makes it feel less scary. Is it irresponsible parenting to not buy your child a bulletproof backpack? Every person's relationship with their own lives and their own kids and their own emotions is up for them to decide and not for me to judge. Sure. If it were me, and that's just me, I would be worried that the fear message of the bulletproof backpack could do more damage than the backpack could increase their safety. You put a kid in a bulletproof backpack, what are you saying to him about how safe it is to go to school? And that message gets burned into their psyche and does way more damage, I would suggest, than the likelihood of them being shot. How do you respond to the criticism then that this is kind of missing the mark when it comes to the conversations being had around gun control? Well, it's a different thing. We're not selling a solution to gun, con gun violence. That's a complete different conversation. All we can do is you know, take care of the ones that we love and the one that's around us. Are you aware of any instance when someone had to make use of one of these products? Yeah, we've heard a few of those, you know, a bunch of those stories. But in terms of actually getting shot with a bullet, no. Thank God we haven't. Well, I kind of think when you initially think bulletproof backpack, it does sound reactionary and paranoid. But then when you think just for a second longer, you realize, well, schools are dangerous places now and the paths to and from school are also dangerous, so maybe it's the right move for me, maybe it's the right move for my friends. Uh, you know, I'm glad this was developed. I'm glad, I, I hope it will save lives, but <laughs> these backpacks don't need to be developed in other countries. You know, you don't see other developed nations, their students wearing bulletproof backpacks. 
What we're asking is preventing that situation from even happening in the first place. That's where you can save the most lives. Someone has the power to make sure that this bullet yeah. <laughs> is not coming for me, it's not coming for my friends, it's not coming for my family, and they're not doing their jobs.